Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to this presentation of the Best of the Best webinar series brought to you by, brought to you by Noved, the design software superstore. My name is Vince, and I'll be uh, hosting the webinar for today. I want to thank all of you for joining us. We're very excited not only to present Share3DF PDF software, but to have Brian Roberts presenting. Before we get started, I just want to give a little background on Brian. Um, he's been involved in 3D product documentation since 2001. As a founder of Quadraspace, he's been an industry leader in the use of 3D outside of engineering, helping to deliver professional 3D-based solutions for general communication, work instructions, technical illustrations, parts catalogs, and other documentation deliverables. So he's really, really good. We're, uh, we're excited and fortunate to have him on board with us. Brian's going to speak for about the next 40 minutes or so. During that time, everyone will be in listen-only mode, but please feel free to send your questions into the question box. After he's done, we'll uh, open it up for a Q&A, and we'll get to as many questions as time allows. Um, we will be recording this webinar, so I just want to give everyone a heads up right now. Um, details on how to find it and where you can view it will uh, all be made available as soon as uh, we're done here. So with that, I want to go ahead and turn over to Brian. Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. I'm going to switch the screen. Yep, sounds good. I'm going to switch the screen over to you, and we'll go ahead and get started here. Great. There we go. All right. Uh, can everybody, uh, can you see my screen there, uh, Vince? Uh, yep, there, just came up. Okay, great. All right, well, I appreciate everybody uh, joining us today. Um, I'm going to go over um, one of our new products. It's called Share3D PDF. It's an uh, entry-level product, and it's designed to uh, take uh, 3D models from various CAD applications and allow you to uh, get those into uh, PDFs. Um, and these will be standard PDFs that don't require any uh, add-ins or uh, plug-ins to the uh, PDF. You just use uh, Adobe Reader 9 or higher, um, and you'll have uh, interactive 3D content right embedded inside um, the PDF. Let's see. So I have a really short presentation here that I'll uh, just quickly go through just to kind of give a little background on uh, where the product fits in, and then we'll jump straight into a demo within two or three minutes, um, probably less. So PD, the Share3D PDF product is really designed to simply translate 3D to 3D PDF for one uh, use. Uh, other uses are taking the 3D uh, information and sharing it with your friends or your colleagues, um, reviewing it with partners, um, and uh, also communicating with 3D for uh, demonstration purposes for customers or uh, vendors or uh, other people in your supply chain. Um, in general, the product is uh, very easy to use. It comes with uh, 50 or more uh, templates, allowing you to set up a PDF in the way that you would like. Uh, you're not just stuck with uh, standard vanilla looking templates. These are really nice looking templates that the 3D information can be plugged into very simply, and then interactivity and additional information can be uh, added around that. Um, that means that the text and the images and everything can be made your own by simply clicking on uh, the area on the, uh, in, during the authoring side of things. Um, and then we'll go over that uh, during the demo. And I think, yeah, I'm ready to jump into the demo. Switch over to the Share3D product here. We'll probably do a little bit of switching between products here. I'm going to do some authoring. Uh, using Share3D, and then we'll go over and uh, view what we have created um, in the uh, in Adobe Reader, and then we'll come back and do a little bit more authoring and, and vice versa, back in again. So does everybody see Share3D now? Yeah, we can see it. It's up? Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so the first thing you'll do, you'll see when you bring up uh, the software is this interface. Um, has a nice little box here, and you just will report a model. So if I click this, and what we're going to do is uh, bring in a uh, 
simple power supply model here. It's a SolidWorks model in this case. Um, just to show you some of the file formats that uh, you can bring in. SolidWorks, Inventor, Step, IGIS, SketchUp, Rhino, um, DWF. There's a variety of uh, interchange formats that you can use, OBJs or uh, 3DS as well, STL. So we're going to bring in a solid assembly directly, and we'll do it here. And once you bring this in, the first thing we're going to do on uh, authoring is we're going to uh, quickly generate our first PDF. So we're going to do some very basic things here initially. We're going to take a few, uh, we're going to go ahead and work with the 3D. You can see how you have a ability to use your mouse to rotate, pan and zoom. Um, in the interface here, you have a model tree so that the parts from your SOLIDWORKS model in this example or other uh, CAD tools will have the parts available here. So you, you click these, to easily select them. You can select by entire sub-assemblies. Uh, you can right click and do some additional things like hide and show. Um, and the whole goal here is to set up different 3D views that you're going to translate out to your 3D PDF. So um, let's go ahead and capture a couple of those views. Uh, let's just go to an isometric view here, get a nice crisp uh, view of that. And down here is a storyboard. And what we're going to do is populate this storyboard with our uh, illustrations, we call them. So we hit New, and this will create our first illustration. You'll see we get a thumbnail down here, and I'm just going to change the name of this one. It gives us a default name of Illustration 1, but I'm going to go with ISO, ISO View, for example. Um, we'll talk about entering descriptions uh, a little later in the presentation. So let's quickly grab a couple more here. Let's, let's go around here and let's grab a view of the back so we can see the uh, plugs here, the thumb screws. So we'll say a back view. And this text uh, is, is important because this is going to go out to our PDFs into the bookmarks initially, and you can use it in other ways too. Let's do one other thing. Let me go get a full board assembly here, and we're just going to isolate that. And control click the background to deselect everything. And we'll grab another view there. And then let's do one other view. I'm going to show all. I'm going to go to a top view. And you have the ability to work with render style, so I'm going to go over to a hidden lines removed style. Let's change our background to white. And I'm going to shift click um, to hide. And so we can get kind of a view of the circuit board um, here. And we'll take one last uh, snapshot for that, or one last little illustration there. So we've now uh, grabbed our model. We've created um, a set of four illustrations. Let's name this one. Um, this is our uh, drawing view from the top. We name this one. We didn't. Let's name that one circuit board. Okay, so we've now captured our four illustrations, and we're pretty much ready to head towards our PDF. So let's go to our publish ribbon, and from here we can select from a different from different splits, starting with. You know, a very simple selection of here's just a full page one. You can see it shows us, uh, it crops this out and shows us how this is going to look in PDF. Uh, here's a portrait version of this. And then it gets a lot more interesting. We can look through different templates. For example, uh, here's a template here. Um, we can change the title by going in here and typing in, for example, power supply. Um, we can change the subtitle, uh, model something like that. Um, you can copy in text here, so if you have little additional text, I'm going to jump over to uh, the text document I have here real quick and grab some text, and we can bring that in and just copy that in, for example. Let's not go with that much. Um, and then as you are editing, you might decide that this isn't the right template you want, so you can go through and we can check out uh, different templates here. And you notice that our text moves along with us. So we don't have to go re-enter our text. We can try different templates before we publish and see which one we think uh, we want to go out with. We're going to publish from this one here. It's called Rectangled. Uh, Rectangled. And then if I want to change out an image, put my own logo in here, 
I can just right click or click one of these image placeholders um, and we'll pick change image and I happen to have uh, in my demo directory here a share 3d logo that we'll use for this example and then we're ready to publish so we have a nice looking template here this is giving us a preview of what uh, we're going to get on our output and then this next step is to hit publish to PDF and we'll call this one let's browse and put it on the desktop Noved one so we'll create that PDF and then I will bring it up and show you uh, how this can work in depth for you, which is really what you're uh, wanting to get to. Okay, so let me size this properly and I'll share it with you. Okay, so that should be, I switched over to the PDF. Um, it's, it's hard to tell, it's very similar to the preview you were just looking at. Um, and in the PDF, what we can do uh, you'll see that our text has come out, the, the whole look and feel of this template is now in PDF format. If you look up here, we're just using Adobe Reader. Uh, there's no plugins here, so this is just standard Adobe Reader. So you can send this to anybody that has Adobe Reader 9 or higher. And if I click the view, it'll bring I can now browse. I can change different mouse modes using the toolbar that's uh, built into uh, the Adobe Reader. I can change rendering styles on the fly. Um, one of the really key things then for working with the uh, Adobe Reader side is that any of the views that you created are automatically added as bookmarks. So it's really easy for somebody uh, that you send this to to recall and send you the views that you added. So if I click this, you'll notice that it brings my ISO view that we captured uh, back for us. Watching here, you'll notice that this area here is showing the title that we typed in for that view. So if I hit back view, it'll give us the title of the view down here in this corner, and it'll rotate the model around for us and animate to that position. Uh, if I click the circuit view, you notice that the uh, parts hid, and we are only getting what the, we captured in the view. And drawing view of different parts hid, just the cover, and we get the uh, different render style uh, that's more like a drawing view. Another feature built into Adobe Reader that we take advantage of is the model tree. Go ahead and orient the model here. What you can do with the tree here is very easily get down into the model and I can click and select parts. I can click to hide and show, click these little check boxes here and it'll hide and show components. And that's built into the Adobe Reader software too. So it has a nice model tree panel and we make use of the bookmarks panel to, to allow you to easily navigate or allow your customers or clients or whoever you're sending this to that may not be 100% uh, familiar with 3D, but they are familiar with working with PDFs. Bookmarks are going to be very familiar to them. Okay, so let me close that out, and I'm going to switch back to our authoring environment here. Let's go ahead and save it. No that demo. And we're going to build upon what we just did here. Um, one of the things that uh, you can do uh, very easily is to uh, modify materials. And uh, we're going to also create an exploded view here. Um, by going to our materials ribbon, uh, if you're on this applied section here, this will show you all the materials that are already in the model. These came in with the SOLIDWORKS design in this example. Any of those can be selected and applied to other parts. But what, more, what you're more likely to do is use our stock library uh, and pick things like a set of metals. Let's go and grab uh, this one, and then you can just apply that as you need across uh, the different components. Maybe we want to change out the top to a, a different look or pass here and change that or that's a little dark and textury for me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, so you have a complete med material editing. Another thing that you can do that's pretty neat is very easily change colors. Maybe uh, back here we have these red uh, pins. Maybe we want to change those to a little different color. So I can just pick that material, and maybe in the real system they're orange. Uh, so we can change the color without having to type in um, you know, a bunch of different color values, a diffuse, a specular, an ambient. You can just really quickly, easily just uh, pick a color. Let's go back to a red. I think that's more normal for um, those kind of pins. Okay, so that's on editing materials. Another thing that's very uh, useful is to create an exploded view um, and then capture it as an illustration. So exploded views are really easy. We just use the move parts tool. And from there, we can just click parts and then pull on this arrow to, uh, to actually move them. And we'll do that and just create our exploded view very rapidly by clicking the different parts. If you want to click multiple parts, you can hold down control and it'll add. You can see how I'm now going to have four screws selected. And then I can move those all together. And let's move this fan out. I'm holding down control again to add parts. And then I can move those. And you'll notice I missed one. I forgot. So after I move, I can also hold down control and add those into that movement. And for our final example here, let's just pull all these pins out. Again, I'm holding down control after I click the first one. And then I just pull on the blue arrow and I pull on along that axis. So when we're done making our explode view, we hit done. And we now have an exploded view to work with. And you'll notice that um, none of the, we do not have this exploded view captured in our thumbnails. So if we want this to end up in our document, likely we're going to need to have this as an illustration down here. So let's just go to isometric, orient it nicely on the page or in the scene, and then we'll hit new and we'll capture our explode view. And give it a name so that in the bookmarks we'll know what we're clicking. And we now have an exploded view captured. <clears throat> and let's uh, move over and let's look at some other templates. Um, now some of the templates you'll notice, this is the one we used last time, um, it had a couple buttons here. And what these two buttons were set up to do is, um, as I click them, it goes through the different views that we have in this ordered sequence down here in the storyboard. So I can click the next view and it'll go through those. And it's another really convenient way for uh, uh, someone to work with the document that you're sending them. There's also other styles of... Uh, navigation. You can set up, uh, let's see, let me grab one of these templates. Out. The list built into the document page. So this one just has the list right here on the page. They won't even have to go look for the bookmarks to get to it. In this case you trade off a little bit of uh, your page space for obviousness of that. You also notice that in these templates we have this description field and the description field is where you can add additional information. Um, so if you're doing, a, if you're wanting to better describe each of these views, we can type in a description for each one, and it will end up in this area of our document. So if we want to go back to here, this is kind of, you know, I could type in. This is the ISO view of our uh, power supply. I mean, you probably type in a lot more useful information than that in general, but um, the back view here, we can say maybe notice the, uh, the uh, thumb screws, circuit board, let's say this um, is a custom design board. And you could copy and paste text in here too. So um, okay, so now you'll notice that as we um, click through on our document page, the textual information here is matching the text that we typed in for that view. So we got an ISO view and we get our description here. We have a back view. We get our description. So that way you can 
not only provide graphical content to people, but you can uh, provide uh, descriptive text and everything very easily. And this information will go right out to our PDF uh, as well. So let's take a look at another template here. There's uh, this one here. It's a pretty nice one. Has more information. Also has a place for us to insert an image. So let's go and add an image to this. So maybe we have we could either use like the schematic or maybe this one with some call outs. It's photograph. This is a different product, but for as an example, um, you can add images in this. That could be uh, logos like we did before, or it could be things about your product or additional information. Some templates have uh, more uh, than one image. This is it's all defined by the template how many options you would have for that. In this case, we just have this one. So let's go ahead and publish out this. Go back to our initial stay, publish. And let's go with two, and we'll create our PDF. And when that's available, I'll bring that and see the functionality of this one. Okay, switching over to PDF. I'll give a second for you guys to catch up online there. Okay, so in the PDF now, um, this is again back in Reader 3D. And again, we have the same look and feel that we had from our template. We can grab the model and uh, uh, rotate it and zoom it. We've now added this table, and there's a descriptive field below this table here. So our text, as we go through the different ones, will change inside the uh, PDF. So we hit the ISO view. goes to that view. Text is displayed. We have back view. Um, the same thing happens there. as we go down through all the different uh, capabilities. And again, it's still, you know, on your, your uh, bookmarks here, you still have uh, easy access to these same uh, 3D views. And you still have the model tree available to uh, your customer for uh, more navigation. Okay. And let's go back one last time here to um, share 3D. And let's, let's talk a little bit um, about the animation and about some of the details of uh, tweaking out, I guess, if you will, the uh, templates themselves. Okay, you'll notice that in the storyboard, as we've made this, there's a little box in between each of these frames, and these we call them the illustration keyframes. And if I click here, this shows me the animation that we're going to get when we go to PDF. And there's a timing and a type of animation. So um, if you right-click, you can pick different transitions. Glide is what you see. There's a different one called Accelerate that kind of starts out uh, slow, goes faster, and then slows back down. Um, and then we can set the timing maybe to five seconds instead of just one. <clears throat> so you get a much smoother, uh, you know, not so rapid animation. Um, another thing that's really handy is if you're going to where these have exploded views, um, you notice that it's kind of hard to see the explosive view actually occurring. Um, let me go slower too. Let me go five seconds. It's actually hard kind of to see the explosive view occurring when they both the movement of the camera is happening at the same time as the movement of the parts. And you can resolve that by picking like an accelerate to or accelerate to reverse. What that does is it moves the camera. In the reverse case, it moves the parts and then moves the camera. I think this one would probably be better with a regular accelerate too. Moves the camera, and then it moves out the parts for you like that. Um, so those are some of the things that you can do to tweak out your own animations at the bottom. These animations are honored through the, uh, the buttons on the page where you have a next step, next step type button. Um, so you can work with that as well. Um, and tweaking out templates, you saw how that you can easily click and change out text. I just click and uh, tweak the text, click to change out images. Um, you can also pick fonts uh, that fit better your uh, style. So we could go through and pick like an airplane's font. I don't really like the pink there, but um, you can see how different fonts give different results. Um, 
that might better match uh, that better match your needs. I'm sorry, it's not fun. Different themes give you different results in this case, um, to work with. Let's see. And I think um, in general, that's the Share 3D product. It's designed to be uh, very straightforward and very easy to use, and to very very rapidly get you into the 3D PDFs. Um, so I think I've covered most of the uh, most of the product here. Um, let's see. Let me uh, jump back over to my presentation here. I have a couple other um, just examples that I want to show you in a second. A step by step instruction and a uh, clickable parts list. These are all in products uh, one step above the Share 3D. Um, so I think we've covered most of these things here that uh, you import your 3D, you pick from more than 50 templates, there's animation capabilities, you can preview uh, the PDF before you actually publish it to PDF, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to tweak it out to get it how you want. You can add descriptive text um, for the uh, for the various uh, views that you're creating, you can move parts, change out themes, um, all kinds of different features packed into this very easy to use uh, software. Um, and then on the side, once you get it into the Adobe Reader, uh, you of course you have your interactive 3D. That's the whole point of the 3D PDF. You don't need any plugins. Uh, we're making use of the bookmarks so that you can easily click those and get to the different views you create. Um, the uh, page design is uh, directly uh, coming out of the same. The, the page design is the same as what you see in the preview inside of uh, Share 3D PDF product. And we're making use of the model tree so that you have access to the components and you're not just locked in uh, without being able to select. Um, so that's pretty much the Share 3D PDF product. We have other products that go. Um, and not only complement that or go beyond that. So let me just start. Um, let's see, what kind of time we have? We have about five or ten minutes here. Um, the Pages 3D product is um, a product that is a free form authoring. So it's not just locked into templates. You're able to go and drag text boxes around, um, position your controls. You have total control over how you want to set up your page. Uh, in addition to that, you can create step-by-step -step procedures, which is very common for work instructions um, and for uh, training. And um, you can add uh, parts lists and bill of materials and, and work with those. And it publishes the 3D PDF, print, um, and uh, we have a Reader 3D product that uh, is a free reader that allows people to uh, share these uh, documents across uh, different areas. And uh, one key thing that really plays into this presentation is that this product <clears throat> will allow you to create custom templates. Now it comes with 50, um, the Share 3D product that is, comes with 50, but you can use this product to create your own or to tweak out one of the ones that it comes with and, and make it your own. And one last, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, one last uh, product I want to talk briefly about is uh, Publisher 3D Standard. Um, it's generally been used for image creation and animation creation, but we're going to have a big upgrade with it um, in October, very soon, um, that will add all the 3D PDF template publishing uh, that you saw in Share 3D. It's going to be added into uh, this product, which will make it very easy <clears throat> for people to create uh, complete step-by-step -step instructions and clickable parts lists. I actually have a couple examples of those, and I'll bring up. Uh, let me get back over to. <clears throat> I'm going to bring up a couple examples here. Um, we'll start with um, a step by step. And I think you'll be familiar with. Uh, uh, you'll have a good idea, even though we haven't shown how to make a step by step in this presentation. Um, based on what you saw, I think you'll have a pretty good idea how this was created. See. Still waiting on it to come up here.
try that again. There we go. Okay, so here's the Okay, so here's the PDF that has a step-by-step -step built into it. You'll notice that this is basically one of the shared 3D PDF uh, templates, um, but this was created in, in pages at this point. And what this allows you to do and what's different is that instead of just one exploded view, this is going to use a step-by-step -step or different steps of that exploded view so that you can show someone how to put together an assembly such as this. So that's a still activity. And what you can do is just click Next buttons in this case, and you'll notice install the backplate using a similar procedure. The text is going through telling us how to put this together. And you'll see that at any point, the objects are highlighted that are going to be part of the next step. I'll um, get a better view of it if I'm an assembler. And I can step through this until this is completely put together. And, and really what this is is a storyboard of images like we did with the Share 3D PDF um, that have your step-by-step -step process. <clears throat> all the way to the end there. And that'll be, uh, that's uh, something that you can do with Pages 3D right now and will be very rapidly, uh, Pages 3D is free form page editing. Um, and we'll have it in the Publisher 3D very soon, which will be the template based uh, editing. And one last example I want to show you um, is a clickable parts list. And again, this is in a PDF. And what you can do with a clickable parts list is we have our 3D here, where we can rotate it. And this is a very simple example. What it shows is that we have a parts list for this model on the page. You can click it, and it's, inter it's uh, interactively showing you the clicked part here. I can click a part in the scene, and it will show me the part in the table. And down here, what you're seeing is metadata uh, that is assigned to those parts in either a CAD tool or in Quadraspace, in the uh, Quadraspace product you're using, um, you can add the metadata in as well. And you can pick which fields show. It doesn't have to show everything like this is showing here. Um, so that way somebody that receives this can click through the different parts. Uh, they could see where the vendor is in order to order the part, for example. Um, they could get specific uh, details about a part um, that might be uh, helpful as far as uh, text helping with that. They can get a material or a type of, uh, uh, of uh, paint or something that might be going on with that material. So it's a lot of reasons for the part inspection. Um, and this is something that's available uh, in a Pages product or in uh, the upcoming uh, Publisher 3D as well. And so I think um, I think that pretty much ends out the, uh, I think I'm about right on time here, a little early maybe, but that uh, covers most of what I was wanting to cover. I guess that leaves us some time for uh, for the Q&A, Vince. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and jump into some questions right here. Um, Brian was wondering, is there a size limit on the assembly that can be imported into Share 3D? Um, there's not a direct size limit. Um, uh, there's not a, you know, you don't load it up and say, oh, you have too many parts or something. Um, what limit size in general would be computer power of either what you're authoring on or the recipient? Um, and, you know, just an organization, if you bring in too large of models, um, sometimes it's just hard to work with in, in general just because you have, you know, lots of models, uh, lots, of, lots of parts, that is. But uh, in general, no. We, uh, as far as horsepower goes, there's, uh, I have some examples where there's a Bobcat model out of Pro-E, uh, it has thousands of parts built into it, and uh, we have some other uh, SolidWorks models that uh, uh, Vermeer, uh, I don't know, grain, grain uh, machine or something. So there's really no hard limit. It's just kind of you got to, you know, it's, it's kind of an art a little bit in there. Okay, cool. Um, here's here's another one from Brian. Can you import a PDF created in Share 3D into another PDF? For example, an existing repair procedure PDF? Um, yeah, sure, people do that all the time. Um, 
what they they just use Acrobat or something to uh, to merge the documents together to merge the PDF uh, components. And I think that there may be some free utilities out there that allow you to merge PDFs, and that's really all. That's the key is that you're just merging them. Okay, cool. Um, here's one from Moses. Um, he, was, he was just wondering about space claim compatibility. Will it be available? Is it now available um, as far as importing? Yeah, um, we've been looking at that, and um, I guess space claim has, is growing more and more popular, and that, that helps drive us in that direction. Um, but at the current time, I, I think space claim is built on, uh, uh, has export to step, um, and that's what uh, we have customers working with is the step file. Okay, cool. Um, let's see here. I get, we have a couple about uh, compatibility. Um, I guess some people were looking at your website and uh, wanted to see if there was a list of uh, available uh, operating systems that are compatible, and if if there is, um, are there future plans for other types of files that you guys are like working on? I guess to bring in later. Um, are we talking about operating systems or file Cat formats? File formats. I'm sorry. Yeah. File formats. Okay. Yeah. There's a uh, a page um, on the website supported formats. Any of the products, it has a link to. If you go products and then pick one, um, any of them will have a link over on the left side to get to the supported 3D formats. I can actually uh, through Vince, we can send you a link uh, if if you'd like to just send you one. Um, and um, yeah, we're always looking at different uh, formats to uh, add to the product. So letting us know through our support uh, form or something is, is uh, great, letting us know what, what formats you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, if you want to send me the link to uh, the list, and I'll go ahead and send it out to everyone who attended, uh, that would be great. I think that would help a lot of people. Absolutely. So, um, here, let's grab a couple more questions here. Um, are you limited to a 3D file size, considering some assemblies can become rather heavy, rather data heavy and large? Um, yeah, but I think what uh, the file size, you know, is always a challenge for people trying to send PDFs around. What, when you come from like a SolidWorks, um, we usually are about 1% to 3% the size of the original SolidWorks uh, files. And then I think that, you know, that might double going into the PDF. Um, it's a little heavier format than our own format. Um, but still, it brings a rel relatively large model down to something that uh, can be passed around through the PDF format. So, um, you know, different people have different uh, needs on the file size. So, it's a, again, it's kind of a question of, uh, you know, just seeing how it works for you and if that file size works for you. I don't I don't think you're going to see any excessively large PDFs in general, but uh, I guess if you get into sharing 2,000, 3,000 part models, um, there's certainly a lot of data and a lot of information in there that's going to have to be pushed into the PDF that may make it uh, pretty big. Okay. Uh, cool. Here's another one from Brian. Can a part and assembly be rotated about a point as well as moved along an axis? Um, yes, in not in Share 3D PDF, but in any of our other products, it has rotate, um, move, and scaling uh, tools built into the exploded tools. Okay, cool. Uh, here's Adam with a question: Does 3D PDF support curve entities, dimensions, or text within the CAD files? Um, I'm not sure what they mean by curve entity. Um, I guess text would be the PMI data or something coming in like that. And uh, what was the final one, Vince? Um, dimensions. Dimensions. Um, Share 3D doesn't, uh, at least the last two, uh, doesn't support those. I'm not sure what the uh, curves are. It does bring in uh, like B-Rep data and stuff from uh, uh, Rhino and translate that into something that we can use. And, and, and the same from any other CAD system. But um, the last two, and the, those we do not, that doesn't, we don't support those. Okay. And then I think we'll get to one more question here. Um, let's see here. Let me think. Okay, here's a, actually here's a couple more came in. Um, here's one from Yuri. Can we view 3D PDF in Google Docs or other web services? Ooh. 
Um, I don't know. Does Google Docs support PDF? Does it have an embedded PDF viewer? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, well, you know, I haven't looked into that, so that'll be something I'll, uh, I'll have to take a look at because that is a good question. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. Let's get a couple more here. Here we go. Here's one from Mark. Can models have textures displayed within a final PDF? Um, yeah, the textures, when we just uh, applied on that uh, uh, that power supply, we applied a texture at the bottom uh, to the base area, and that goes out to PDF. Um, uh, and if you import textures from SketchUp or SolidWorks or your CAD information, CAD tools, um, those textures should go out to the PDF as well. Now, uh, some of the more fancy textures, uh, like if you get into 3D Studio and you're doing procedurals, uh, you'll have to bake those um, and then put them out as a DWF or something, but... I don't, I don't think we're talking about that. Yeah, okay. So we'll get to one last question here. Um, Larry wants to know, in the future, will there be the ability to export annotations from Pages 3D into the PDF file? Uh, um, I, yes, there will be, um, and pretty soon, I guess. I, we haven't divulged that yet, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's something that we're working on right now. Okay, cool. So uh, I think that'll do it. I'm going to switch the screen back to me, and uh, we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, yeah, I'd like to uh, thank you, Brian, first of all, for that presentation. That was great, really fascinating. I'm sure everyone out there loved it as much as, uh, as, much as I did. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted to thank everyone who attended out there. Um, thank you for attending this presentation, No Veg's Best of the Best webinar series. I um, just want to give a little background on us here at NoBedge in case you're unfamiliar with leading online design software Superstore. Uh, not only do we have the best prices around, but our staff is extremely awesome. Call, chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, another thing I'd like to draw your attention to is a, is a benefit to you as 3D, as CAD users, is a WikiCAD. There's a screenshot of it there on your screen. We here at NoBedge love to go above and beyond for all design professionals. Doing so, we've created several communities like WikiCAD to foster the collaboration and communication between design professionals. Um, if you're not a member, it's free. It's easy to sign up. This webinar will be made available there as well as on our website, but this is a great resource if you're interested. Um, when you sign up, you get the latest news, trends, events, tutorials, um, links to job postings, all sorts of great resources. It's basically all things CAD. So it's a great resource. I recommend you check it out. Um, but yeah, having said all that, um, Brian, is there anything else you want to add really quick at the end here before we sign off? Um, no, I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have anything else. I, I do appreciate you hosting this, Vince, and uh, letting us uh, be part of it. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you for uh, coming in and, uh, um, and, uh, t and taking a look. Yeah. So, yeah, again, thank you, Brian. Um, we'll send a follow-up email, I guess, with a, a bunch of information to everyone. Um, one will be the link to this webinar in case you want to view it again. Another will be a link to uh, the trial version in case you're interested in trying it out. And then another, I think, will be uh, the list of compatible uh, files. So hopefully that will uh, help answer anyone's questions. If anyone has a question that they think of later, feel free to shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, so uh, I think having said all that, we'll go ahead and uh, call this thing a wrap. All right. Yeah, so uh, thank you, everyone who attended, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time.